Hey guys, what's up? You're watching TechClick and today we're gonna to be reviewing the Red Dragon K552 keyboard. This is probably one of the most popular keyboards on Amazon and for good reason because it's one of the most affordable mechanical gaming keyboards on the market. This was also my personal first ever mechanical keyboard and today we're gonna to be checking out and seeing if it's still worth getting in today's current market. Let's get into it. Starting off with the specs, the K552 is a TKL keyboard, which means that it's going to give you access to arrow keys, your function row and other media keys, but excludes the numpad that you would get on a full size keyboard. It's a great form factor for gaming because it gives you space for your mouse, but doesn't sacrifice too much functionality. Your options for colorways are pretty simple. You can choose between a black case with black keycaps or a white case with white keycaps. When it comes to switch options, you can choose between red, blue, or brown or Temu switches. If you aren't familiar with keyboard switches, the basic concept is that red switches have a linear feeling and that they don't have any clickiness or bump to them. The switch goes straight down and back to a starting position without any interruptions or bumps. Blue switches on the other hand are clicky and loud and you can feel the tactility of the switch more when you press. Blue switches are the loudest because the click gives audible feedback so you know when you've actuated the switch without bottoming out. And finally, brown switches are tactile like blue switches except they aren't made to be clicky and loud like the blue switches, but instead focus on tactile feedback that you can feel while you're typing. To help you decide what switch is best for you, here's a quick sound test comparison between the red and blue Atemu switches that are available on the K552. Speaking of switches, the K5F2 surprisingly has hot swap functionality, but you can only swap out the switches with other Otemu switches. I was surprised to find this out because not only did Red Dragon not include a switch puller in the box, they didn't even promote it on their product page. So if you want to swap out your clicky blue switches after they start to annoy everyone in a three mile radius of you, you can do that. Just know that you'll have to buy a switch puller and about 87 replacement Otemu switches to go with it. Moving on to the keycaps, they're made from ABS plastic, which is known for generally being a smooth and thin plastic that isn't as high quality as like PBT keycaps. Another reason they're seen as lower quality is because over time ABS keycaps like the ones found on the K552 tend to develop a shine while PBT keycaps are more resistant to that unwanted shine. But keep in mind that ABS plastic is expected at this price point and if this is your first mechanical keyboard or you've only used membrane keyboards then this isn't really a big deal. I've used tons of different keycaps like ABS, PBT, even rubber keycaps, and also GMK keycaps, which are considered some of the highest quality keycaps on the market. And it's not that ABS keycaps are bad, they're just different. If you're still confused, it's all good. Just make sure that you know that your ABS keycaps will probably develop a shine on them as you begin to use them over time. Checking out the font on these keycaps, it has gamer written all over it. And yeah, whether you like a font or not is preference, but I think part of the reason Red Dragon keyboards get a bad rep for not being as high quality is because they are infamous for using that classic gamer font. It's very bold and it's not trying to hide the fact that this keyboard is designed for gamers who wanna show off their new RGB keyboard. But while this keycap font isn't something that that I would prefer, it isn't so bad that I wouldn't use it or recommend this keyboard just because of it. If you are looking for that gamer aesthetic though, on a budget, then this is exactly what you're looking for. Another thing that I wanted to mention that's convenient is that above the arrow keys, there is a caps lock and screen lock indicator that will light up red if you have either one selected. Next, the typing experience on this keyboard is really good. Everything felt fast and responsive thanks to the 1000 hertz pulling rate and the red switches that I got felt smooth to type with. The only thing that I did notice is that there is some spring ping that you can hear while you're typing. I usually have my headphones on and I'm listening to music or a podcast or gaming or something while I'm using this keyboard anyways. So it isn't a big deal to me, but there is definite spring pain that you can hear if you're typing without headphones on or you aren't listening to anything. Also, this keyboard does have stabilizers under some of the larger keys like the space bar and backspace that will help to reduce some of that rattling. But I think that the stabilizers could also be improved, especially on that space bar. Shifting over to the case, it's made out of plastic, which will affect the sound profile of the keyboard, but the overall 
overall build quality of the case is solid and I wouldn't have any concerns with long-term wear and tear on the case. Also, the cable on the K552 is a non-detachable one. So if the cable does end up breaking, you will be out of your keyboard, but they did add like an extra thick layer of rubber where it connects to the keyboard to make sure that it doesn't just snap off so easily. Looking at the RGB, there is a solid amount of customization options available that have been built into the keyboard as shortcuts. Apparently there is software for this keyboard, but it's known to be buggy. So I would recommend that you either reference the manual or look it up anytime you want to change something if you don't remember a particular shortcut. I'm putting a list of the most common shortcuts you probably would want to use on the fly, but if there's anything else you want to try, I would definitely check out the manual that comes in the box. Even on max brightness, I don't think this keyboard gets too bright, especially during the day. But if you're going to be working in a darker room, then that RGB is going to be a lot more visible and will look a lot brighter. Also, the keyboard does come with a keycap puller, but just know that it's a plastic ring puller and not a wire puller. So this can scratch your keycaps when you're removing them from your keyboard. But at this price point, I didn't expect it to have a wire puller. So just so you keep your options open, there are other keyboards in this general price range, like the Pictech TKL keyboard that comes in at $20. Although that keyboard only comes in blue switches and only comes in a black colorway. And then there's the Moto Speed TKL keyboard that's around the $40 mark, which comes in more colorway options and even wireless options, but that doesn't have a caps lock indicator like the Red Dragon. I'll have links to all these keyboards in the description if you want to check any of them out. So the Red Dragon K552 is a great deal at the $30 price point, especially if you're looking to pick up your first mechanical gaming keyboard. You get that great TKL form factor that's great for gaming and productivity. You get either red or blue mechanical switches, ABS keycaps, a caps lock indicator, and a solid typing experience for a budget price. I don't know a single keyboard that offers what the K552 does with the level of quality and at a cheaper price, so from a value perspective, this is really tough to beat. You get a ton of RGB customization and you get to swap out the keycaps and switches to customize this keyboard even more. If you're still not sure about this keyboard, there are over 25,000 reviews where you can check out customers' personal experiences and details about this keyboard and a ton more video reviews on YouTube that I would definitely recommend you guys check out if you're still on the fence about this keyboard. Like usual, I'm going to have links to the K552 down below in the description along with the other keyboards that I mentioned in this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure that you guys give it a like since it really does help out the channel. And if you're new here, I make all types of content on gaming tech. So if you're interested in this type of content, consider checking out the channel and subscribing. And like always, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.